I'd like to first thank the organisers and conveners of the second annual Social Media and Higher Education Conference for the invitation to present at what I consider to be an important crossroads of social media and higher education. I'll take the liberty of using my speaking notes in this presentation as it's been one of the rare occasions where I've not afforded myself any procrastination leeway in the preparation of this uh, visual performance. Um, this presentation has provided me with an opportunity to draw together the key threads that I believe are the most important considerations and themes emerging from my own research studies. Um, views expressed in, in this forum are not um, of any associated company, organisation, nor employer, past or present. My presentation provides current and contemporary visual examples of where social media has a place in higher education amongst current trends of corporate takeovers and emergent technologies that I find myself immersed within. And as documented, my presentation is an account of the topic as it pertains to my research interests in emergent technologies, and more importantly, as it relates to my uh, professional working relationships and to my continued and at times circumspect use of social media in a personal context. Uh, this presentation has also provided me time to reflect on my own status as a doctoral student in an Australian higher education facility amongst preparations myself to uh, submit a research study application for an ethics committee approval. I'm speaking in this forum as a fledgling board member of the Australian Privacy Foundation. The scale of proactive action that this foundation has taken in Australia over the last two decades is astounding. Involved in a wide range of privacy issues, including ensuring that the Commonwealth Government's changes to privacy legislation to cover the private sector give Australians real privacy safeguard. Contributing to the development of industry codes, highlighting privacy risks in emerging technologies such as social media and biometrics, as well as participating in global efforts to make the internet safe for personal privacy. I also find it useful to scan the lists that pour out of the EFA, given that many of the concerns regarding social media that I hear espoused from the lips of my friends, family and professional colleagues often end up unanswered. Uh, but then answered through such, such subscriptions. I'm also speaking in this forum as a non-shareholding director of Core Valence, who are a commercial entity in supplying covert technologies in the Australasian region. A hypocritical duality you might care to make mention. The main reason I frequent this space is to better understand the impacts that the technologies that support private investigator work practices are having on the community at large. The manner in which social media platforms cross over into that information collation practice is of great interest to me. Front and centre of my research is the plight humanity now finds itself subjected to as a connected networked mass and as users of products and services that are inexorably by default designed to filter the most productive outcome for the service we consume we also contribute to perhaps one of the largest identity management activities ever known in the history of person kind. Our personal contributions in ciphers and signs and media recordings, position, proximity and in absence all constitute a creation that consortiums beg to differ with their own sense of ownership. At best we can claim that our volunteerism to contribute data to a network service is personal and unique. And in times where the data is leveraged for commercial purpose, we seek solace in the echelons of society as debates flurry, representations argue for us as to who owns the data, and to what extent we can determine that which is ours amidst theirs. As ambient intelligent curriculum connects wearables with learning and assessment, the always-on classrooms aren't undoubtedly already arrived. 
The seamlessness of network connection brings with it a dawn of place-based educative arrangement, driven by industry need, internationality, and jurisdictionlessness. As I see it, our personal sense of place is now subject to rapid iterative function creep, and with it a trajectory of dependence on mobile enabled services commensurate. I challenge anyone to refute otherwise, most especially amongst a higher education, social media immersed learner cohort. Any literature review will identify that a present reality for higher education organisations is inclusive of the pressure that a highly mobile social media marketplace now exerts upon its core clients. The competitive advantage of prestige, location or research status of a higher education institution is also giving way to an ease of engagement, authentic communication experience and the availability of access to accreditation that was once relegated to face-to-face -face amphitheaters. This presentation has been composed with a view to inform and reinforce where these implications may now exist. This presentation will also no doubt raise more questions than provide strategies, statistics or answers for the how or the why of harnessing social media in a higher education context. It seems evident to me that the long tail of relationship and legacy of trust built with learners in higher education organisations is now challenged by the demand for services that resemble a student's own nimble online social portfolio. Perhaps the readiness of higher education organisations to provide more API hand-throughs to and from such spaces is testament to a change in the relationship they now find themselves hostage to, rather than an ageing framework of the LMS. Policy frontier is emerging that balances the practical reality of containing user experience, juxtaposed with that of the need to be in the hip pocket of the mobile learner. Sorely tested, of course, when fault or commercial intent scrapes a user's content in a gross breach of privacy. Such breaches recently seem to be testing an otherwise ambivalent belief in social networking providers who purport to have seemingly watertight user data integrity. Predictions and soothsaying in this space is no more silently realised after conducting a broad assay of learners' mobile connection from a higher education cohort. Who, of course, frequent life with technologies sometimes literally body-worn 24 hours a day. Location's a big business, none more so evident than the provision of services that imbue personification to an otherwise invisible, cold cloak of connection. Where you are has just become just as important as what you are engaging with, and given the saturation of mobile device ownership in Australia, it's not surprising that the most innovative network tech developments in the social media landscape are, of course, in the mobile space. For example, take a look at the first 12 screens of my own mobile phone. In fact, let's just make it the first two. Each and every application is serviced and made available, available under the condition that I provide my whereabouts in real time and at any given time. Each application reports regularly to its founder and likewise many of these applications report to each other. To deduce what I'm likely to be doing or where I'll be next. I could almost guarantee that my mobile web interface resembles that of the generation now. Perhaps the apps, the apps might, might be different, but the uh, functional pingbacks as service push and pull, I can guarantee would be just as rapid and just as pervasive. The world's leading developed, developers in this global and social mobile marketplace are also acutely aware of the geospatial significance of having brand advocates milling amidst other industry representatives. Where you are has become what you are, and in doing so a collective we assembles, which in turn widens the sphere of influence, only possible when the user opts in or accepts the ambient and pervasive automated reporting inherent with each and every service. 
the need for regulation to protect the privacy and the security of individuals subjecting themselves to these commercial surveillance and data surveillance practices is widely referenced. It begs the question as to how many higher education organisations also share or knowingly contribute to such location collusion. An example of one of the more significantly publicly accessible open projects with regards to patterning and monitoring of social data is Crowdflow, described as Crowdflow started in April 2001 after it was revealed that iPhones collect and store their location data. We have since collected and analysed the log files of almost 1500 iPhones and iPads and created an open database of Wi-Fi and cell networks. We also visualised how these networks are distributed all over the world. More information on that project is over at crowdflow.net. So speaking of GIS, and if the term is yet another acronym to tackle, then I urge you to, urge you to visit the Esri's website, esri.com, what is GIS? It's interesting to note that the first step in a contemporary GIS landscape is, i.e., step one, ask. I often gauge my own thoughts around permissions and related GIS-related privacy and security considerations with reference to my own academic supervisor's work in this area, which is available at works.bpress.com forward slash Katina Michael or K Michael. Likewise, if you thought GPS was neat, then welcome to IPS. These acronyms all point to a widening reality that our journeys are mapped, our social mobile existence is monitored, and really the proof is in our handset. Uh, without these systems and connections, uh, our mineral, mineral rich mobile social media experience would cease to exist. Although we can be assured none of it will disappear in our lifetimes, Having said that, though I'm sure it's showing my age here, but hmm, yes, I can remember a time before the internet existed. And yes, unlike my 13 year old, I can recall life without mobile Facebook. As always, there's a dimension to spatial anything that rarely reaches the ground, pardon the pun, in a public context. Yet, we can all be assured whatever is occurring on a commercial front is subject to the oversight tenfold by other agencies such as DIGO. So what's changed recently in the social mobile space? Where can we see this whereabouts trend having uptake across these technology providers and whose brand has the highest visible presence on any campus or virtual meeting place in higher education? Apple's recently announced its own plans to provide, capture and use spatial everything via its own systems, not Google's, signalling perhaps a race between consortiums to uh, better equip customers of what they need to know, directly referencing where they now stand, quite literally. All of this is happening amongst social media giants who know the value in takeovers that bring informed user groups into a widening array of acquisitions that marry place with social space. A media release recently on the takeover by Facebook of Instagram stated, Social network Facebook has bought Instagram, a profitless two-year photo, two-year-old photo sharing application. Not bad for a four-week startup to offload their creation for a cool billion dollars or so. There's more on that over at Sydney Morning Herald. The acquisition and takeover conversations also recently been dominated by Microsoft's bid of $1.2 billion for the enterprise social network Yammer, which also has its finger in many higher education and affiliated stakeholder group communication pipelines. Considering the pervasive nature of Yammer's mobile enabled feature set, it's evident that place and space is as important as the elephant in the room, or the Android, Android in your handheld, wearable, location enabled computer. A de-identified conversation I received recently speaks of the disquiet that such takeovers mean in the broader context of actual or perceived professional workplace privacy. Another giant with a record of company takeovers per week is making perhaps the most audacious move into a booming area of location enabled, body wearable, human computing, naturally socially media enabled. This is a recent photo of Sergey Brin, Russian-American co-founder of Google, seen here on the road with the Project Glass team at the recent 
G Plus PC phot Photographers Conference in San Francisco. You can see more of that at gpluspc.com. So Jay's wearing um, Google Glasses, which are widely reported to be location-enabled, augmented, and network-connected. So what is he wearing? What is he looking at? Who is he connected to? And what is being augmented as he embodies a new hands-free, so socially mobile, connected existence? Google obviously has its sights on where social meets wearable. Without a doubt, the integration of these wearable technologies with Google Plus as a social networking facility has been thoroughly thought through. The outputs, the outputs for that project can be viewed on the Project Glass web space. So what other social media providers have moved into the location-enabled, body-wearable and enabled technology space? None other than Luxie, which you can find at luxie.com. As the Luxie website states, the winning baseball catch, your child's first steps, bamboo, baboon antics at the zoo, stream it all, capture it all, Luxie makes it all possible. It instantly connects you to your friends and your family, wherever they may be. From unexpected moments to exhilarating adventures, Luxie makes sharing your life easy. The camera's small, the possibilities are huge. Note the format compatible social media enabled sharing that the camera's output lends itself to. Oakley's also made its debut in this space recently with a differing association, teaming up with Luxie and Tazar.com to produce the next generation of location enabled, body wearable camera technologies. Pictured here are the latest Tazar Axon Flex wearable camera glasses. Tazar is known for other products that pose a more lethal result for uncooperative behaviours. Naturally, cops wear HD cameras on duty and they need somewhere to store their data. With integrity and security, and most importantly as this image points out, the reusability of that HD point of vision in the courtrooms of our fair nations. In StepsEvidence.com, the data captured using these body wearable, location enabled, timestamp technologies. A global home with profound implications. Given that the trials with these technologies in action are far reaching and in our own communities already across Australia. If I switch my hats now from the last five years of investment as an entrepreneur in bringing prototypes from great ideas to practical realities, then I can recount the journey I've taken with three other directors in building from ground up a rich media e-portfolio with a learner focus using an open source social network. This initiative, I believe, has great potential, provided all of the former reservations around privacy, security and integrity of users' data form the backbone of the service in the learning and teaching context. I'm giving you some insight here into what goes on in the back room of a social media enabled platform developer. For, for the last five years or so, Streamfolio has enabled education and training organisations to address assessment and recognition of prior learning needs where rich media location, storage, replay, private sharing and so on play an increasingly important part in education and training. The main key to the development of the service is paralleled initiatives of course out in the social web. However, extensive consultation has shown us that no two organisations are alike except on one point, privacy. Well, and perhaps commercial advantage. Picture here are one of many rich media creation products that we supply. Location enabled, body wearable, 5 megapixel video audio capture. And of course the data needs to go somewhere and the learners, not administrators, need to be able to manage their own video portfolios with these to share with their trainers, assessors and others. A small snapshot of Streamfolio clients include these noted here. This gives you an idea of the gravity of what we call learner and trainer and in the context in which we sought to answer the questions that they were having with rich media creations splash liberally across the open web mainly due to their own organisation's inability to provide user autonomous, unlimited data storage facilities. The selection of an open source social networking platform, namely ELG, enabled Streamfolio to build a by default private network connected seamlessly with unlimited video storage, live recording, broadcast and sharing. ELG powers networks from a wide range of organisations including Oxfam, the World Bank, UNESCO, Aerospace, NASA, Royal College of British Architects. 
the Australian government, the British government, the federal Canadian government, the New Zealand, New Zealand Ministry of Education, State of Ohio, United Nations Development Program, the Canadian Employment and Immigration Union, Tides Canada, Aerospace, the Executive Lounge, Hill and Knowlton, Institute of Executive Coaching, Interactive Games and Entertainment Association, live out there, United World, Wiley Publishing, Harvard University Extension School, Saga School District, Stanford University, Think Global School, University of Brighton, University of Calgary, Grid Research Centre, University of Nebraska-Lincoln, John Hopkins University, Oregon State University, Great Ormond Street Hospital, University of Florida, to name but a few, and mainly in the US, as you can hear. The main development that's occurred over the last two years using ALGA as the community backbone has been matching the data creation aspirations of learners with easily accessible storage, multi-format encoding management, sharing and reusability of these media assets in a personal portfolio. That part of the equation is unique uh, in that rich media um, is addressed as an e-portfolio repository available via a dashboard and known as Streamfolio. The mobile interface for the learner of anyone using a Streamfolio account allows them to map themselves from a mobile device to their on, on, online e-portfolio. You'll note that sharing only occurs on a private level. Manual description fields creation are complemented, complemented by automated device data added and accessible for future authentication purposes, which we believe to be the near future of assessment practices in Australia. The premise for this prediction is based upon the context of where something is created which then becomes part of the dynamic and persistent identifier that's currently ignored or not deemed or nor required of media submitted by a learner for assessment currently. All media creations in Streamfolio are on a trust-based one-to-one or a group private share capacity only. The sophistication of this development is that each and every user has their own control over their own content including delete the true sense of delete, for the asset is absolutely removed from the user's online portfolio storage account. Yes, you've heard correctly, the user has the power to permanently delete anything they have uploaded at any point in time, or to retract sharing of that media asset of their own volition. As discussed with my co-supervisor, Professor Tami Leonen, Alto University, Finland, and Leo Gagel, Bright Cookie Educational Technologies in Melbourne, Australia, in mid-2011, it would appear that the meta will become the main matter of the education sector for the foreseeable future. In other words, data is tomorrow's gold, and anything that points closer to where it can be found in relation to all else permitted to be associated is the truest base for future knowledge. There seemed to be a consensus in our discussions at that time that an augmented overlap that is participative, collaborative, and place-based intelligent would meet the many needs that are currently fielded from lateral thinking educational technologists. So therefore, future iterations of Streamfolio will permit the user to record live video and respond to overlays of prompts to interact with that the educators require the learners to know at that point in time and in that location. Combined data sets recorded will show the full interaction between the learner as part of the end media result. Open a Wikitude account to see a basis for what I've just spoken to. So what are the associations between social media and the four valences? Has the higher education sector invested any time in learnt behaviours of social media providers from worst case scenarios? Has the notion of social media as being a surveillance media been addressed and in doing so what recommendations have come forth that inform the way higher education organisations use social media. The concept of ubervalence, as articulated by Dr. M. G. Markle, provides a basis to consider the convergence of the main three points. The nexus that where SUS valence, surveillance and data valence into an embodied and transdermal association with humans. Again, I urge you to think of beyond leveraging social media to increase your citations or broadcast your latest and greatest. A seminal paper recently published by Professor Steve Nan et al. speaks to the growing connection between SUS violence, policing and social media, and that's available at interactiondesign.org. Another consideration hotly debated draws connections between social media, 
from the hobbyist UAV aerial vehicles commanded by the public that connect HD video, audio, location, meta and other data into an open social and media rich web. My EFA lists um, provide me with a clear picture as to where social media serves to identify those who openly identify with much larger scale developments for more, far more serious pursuits of civil intervention. More on this at Gizmodo, a new view of America's deadliest drone. Again, note the likes. At the beginning of this presentation, I noted the following tracking of my web navigation through this social media landscape with a simple and free plugin for the Chrome browser, browser called Collusion. That's available at chrome.google.com. At the conclusion of, of this creation of this presentation, the very same application showed the following identifiable and unidentifiable sources tracking my navigation through and across the social and other web. On a local level, we're faced with takeovers that could profoundly impact the way our own children immerse themselves in educational technology in the higher education sector of Australia. It's up to all of us here to inform the future and, and the look of the lightning fast app downloads and the dazzling fiefdom of the warlords milling around their digital futures don't unduly uh, affect their lives. What is clear is that the future of social media and higher education will not be a one-stop shop. Thank you. You can find out more about um, what I'm interested in and connected to via alexanderhayes.com